Hey, what's going on? I wanted to do a quick review and update of the MWXR1. Um, since it's come out, um, there's been quite a few revisions, and I've had a good bit of time with it to give it kind of my initial impressions my of the car. With it. So right off the bat, the, the build was pretty straightforward, has a couple of quirks. Um, that being said, every other uh, manufacturer at this scale has just as many, if not more, quirks and they're far worse the good thing about the build is actually the cad file um that's something that's really really useful um, when you're building the car so make sure to go check out those videos from mwx performance on uh, if you need help building um, i do have my own build video but yeah definitely check out the cad file and his build videos they'll be um if you use the cad file properly the build is pretty smooth um kind of going um, into the car has a really unique um rear pod design it's like this tri ball uh, floating pod mount uh, rear pod design i really like it it stays super free never had an issue except like the first day which was i had a crazy crash and you know it could have been just the way i built it too but now got a lot more experience with the car this thing's a tank not a single thing has been broken and bent or even needed to be replaced um on the car that being said i did do some upgrades to the car that just because I, I was looking for you know try to get the extra bit of performance out of it so once i got real comfortable with the car and the, as in like a box stock setup you know no upgrades on the car i started you know doing a couple one upgrade at a time and then um kind of just uh, to where it is right now so one of the big things is this this is the big block battery kit um, you need the one piece servo mount, the big block uh, carbon brace, and then the battery itself. That, if you have not run that before, or if you don't run it on your car now, you're just you're just leaving time on the table. Um, it's as simple as that. You're just leaving tons of performance on the table. That's an absolute must. Um, I did not run it at first. I thought, uh, I don't need it. It's an upgrade. Don't need it. I got it, trust me, best thing, um, best upgrade for the car, hands down. That that needs to be the first thing. Um, that when you get the car, first thing you gotta do is get the get the new larger 550 milliamp uh battery pack. So super low IR, really good punch, runtime for a stock class, pretty much until you get tired. Um, easily over 14, 15 minutes. The battery does kind of go down after like the 10 minute mark you can kind of notice a little bit of drop in performance but the first minute first two minutes even is just ridiculously fast and then after like that 90 second two minute mark the battery kind of settles in and then it's like that for like the next eight minutes so for an eight minute main qualifier seven minute qualifier that battery is perfect you're not going to be dropping off at the end of the race um, no voltage sag and you can consistently hit your fast lap. So from the beginning of the race to the end of the race, it's going to be, you know, a tenth of a second of a difference, pretty much. Maybe a tenth and a half. I don't think a full two tenths, honestly. So it really just is how good can you drive, where if you have the smaller 350s or 385 milliamps, you're not going to be hitting the, if you're a perfect driver, you're not going to be hitting the fastest laps at the beginning and the end of the race. You're going to get a few at the beginning, and then your car is going to slow down, and then that's that. So... Definitely can't speak highly uh, enough of that big block uh, battery. The next thing the car, I started with the 1-2 plate. This is the 1-3 camber caster plate, so 3 degrees caster. It's a much smoother feel, much smoother, much more stable on the straights and in like sweeping corners. Um, so the But for most tracks, you'll probably want the 1-3. But for the super kind of technical and like really sharp, aggressive like turns and stuff, you might want that 1-2 plate. Um, well, and that's just my opinion on that. Um, the other thing, upgrade on this car, these are the V2 knuckles with the uh, the ZS knuckles. The ZS is the line of upgrade parts. Uh, ZS is for zero slop. So it has a unique design in there, which, you know, uses some really small O-rings that eliminate real, uh, uh, the tiny, you know, thousandths of an inch of slop that there is, as well as it actually keeps the grease in the kingpins um so it makes maintenance a little bit nicer than the zs axles these in combination with these is it's kind of like the way to go and if you don't have an mwx car 
get these axles and do yourself a favor. Um, it is really, really nice. Uh, you don't notice that the play until you put these on, then you're like, whoa, that's what a solid, like, you know, bearing and, and, and wheel front end feel like. So the other thing, thing, this is the new MWX uh, John Marima bumper. So then the, what's also being made and for sale right now is the replaceable carbon bottom end, which allows you to run the Corvette C8 body, which is also really popular. It handles really well. I've personally been uh, doing a lot of tire testing and I started with the John Marima body. So that's just what I've stayed with. I don't want to switch bodies while I'm, you know, testing tires, trying to keep everything um, the same. I'll kind of do like, maybe talk about that more later. The tires that I found work really well. Um, I am running Hobby Mount ESC. It's really good. Um, durability wise, eh, it, it's pretty good. It did, the case did come uh, come apart and then, you know, the, the board inside, I had to put it back in. Um, and that's that. Uh, uh, the biggest thing, no Bluetooth. So yeah, I am stuck constantly unplugging that cable, plugging in the programmer, you know, adjusting like uh, drive frequency and, and, and all that stuff. Uh, Got to constantly plug it in, plug it in, uh, and unplug it. That being said, it is very fast. Um, the programmer and saving the settings, it is quick, but not as quick as using Since the then, I've actually been having um, a lot of issues where the servo is like not returning to center has a hard time finding center so it kind of like walks in, in direction sometimes it's not good but that's not really on the car itself i'm just talking about the servo real quick but the new mwx servo it's uh tuned and it has like a different program you know like software whatever magic in it that pretty much guarantees it's going to find center um, every time the um, other last piece of electronic is the motor so let me make it focus I'm running the uh, MWX 2500 kV or uh, 29.5 turn. That motor is an absolute rocket. This is my second. Nine seven ten five. <laughs> Eight seven nine two. Motor is even faster. This one's 2769. My first uh, MWX motor is 2750. They're very close in speed, but this one just has like just this extra top end. Acceleration, everything is obviously the same, but the top end, this one just just like a couple. I can feel this one just walks down the straight just a sure, little bit focused. quicker. I run with um, some guys that have like 2760s, 2770s. And my motor, my 2750, the first one I got, was faster than theirs. So KV is not the whole story, but it's definitely a big part of it, right? So, you know, IR, how much amps it's drawing, um, all those things are really important when um, we're talking brushless but motors. I don't overall, the car, that. it is awesome. Um, awesome, awesome, awesome. My... I found the biggest but for my local track here in Tampa, Florida, I found um, the black springs were good. However, with tires that I like to run, I ended up going with the red springs. And then other thing that I changed from the box, instead of using 15K in the side, 30K in the center, I used 30K, 30K, uh, 30K in the pins up front too. So 30K all around. And I, I went to the, the blue springs just kind of stiffens it up and it was kind of it's not perfect yet um but it's, it's a step in the right direction i still need to go mess with like you know do like some dynamic caster um mess with that as well as a uh, bump steer i think with between dynamic caster and messing with the bump steer this car is i mean maybe just because i've driven this so much i'm getting too cocky but there's nothing that's going to beat this um yeah, I can say that with confidence. I mean, I've seen this run. I've seen what the other guys run. So once I get the little, you know, figure out exactly that perfect uh, perfect thing for our local track, it's an absolute beast. Right now, the local track, um, your track changes a lot. But like for this last layout, 8.3s, 8.4s uh, seconds were pretty good laps. Um, I think it was a lot of 8.5s, but like the fast lap was like an 8.4. Um, and then... Yeah, so when I got, you know, I I got to go to the track, I was hitting a lot of 8.5s, 8.6s, um, 
couldn't get the eight fours, did some tire changes, started hitting eight fours, so I got the new record, and then really just went off the deep end, um, just really getting everything, you know, right on the car, and um, we're in the sevens, seven nines, so not consistently seven nines, I got a lot of eight flats, um, a lot of it's the tire game, right when I find the right tires, uh, they work, and then they stop working, um, temperature changes, or something goes on, so, you know, that's the... Uh, that's racing when you're trying to chase the setup you'll pretty much be always running in a circle but the one time when you do have that that setup it is fun for those few uh few track days that you get to go to the track it's just absolutely dialed um i am running the alloy chassis so it's a little bit lighter than the brass chassis but definitely heavier than the aluminum so originally when i hit like the eight fives and stuff i had the um aluminum chassis uh, it was so my car consistent. would not roll. It was really good, um, you know, in the corners. No traction rolling whatsoever. However, once I started playing with tires, I found some tires that were a little bit more aggressive, a little bit softer, more grip, more corner speed, you know, and started traction roll very easily. However, I loved the way the car cornered, except when I pushed it too hard, it traction rolled. So, yeah, tuning the aluminum chassis... Um, unless you really know what you're doing, I'd probably stay away from it until, like, um, or if you're running 102, 102, that's probably fine. Um, but, yeah, this alloy chassis, um, made the world of a difference. I kind of even want to put the brass chassis on, um, see if I can just milk even more corner speed out of it. This car, um, so, one thing I like, um, I run it, a lot of people don't, but it has a little transponder holder. I, I like it just kind of keeps it out of the way i like uh, this red I'm trying to think my only complaints with the car right. the oh one kind of somewhat serious complaint so the o-rings in here there's little o-rings at the bottom and on the top i found that the bottom one it just comes out i wonder if it's still in yeah it's still in right now but sometimes that bottom one comes out and it gets stuck to their red shim um so one thing this piece is a different color than this piece and I feel like they should both be like an anodized red um, that kind of bugged me and then something else that I don't like let me think of the things I don't like there's obviously not many of them because it drives like a whatever train um, I kind of wish it came with the this chassis the alloy chassis instead of the brass um, I don't know if that's an issue with the car because I feel like it's like a good middle ground. You have like the, the medium weight chassis. Then if you want, you can upgrade to the heavier or it can go to the lighter, like um, something I'm doing. But you know, no thing. really major complaints. This car is an absolute unit. Um, there's a couple upgrades I got to get. There's a new 3D printed, um, whatever this connector, a PH 3-pin connector that I'm going to get to kind of keep the connector a little lower and it's easier to plug in and out of one of the best things about this car is when you buy it you get a lot of cool stuff out of the box out of the box you get this pn gear diff which that's pretty much the gold standard right it comes with all the springs so it comes with like red blue gold you know whatever the colors are i don't remember all the colors so it comes with the side springs all the different ones for the center spring all the different front springs there are an upgraded line of springs. They're black and like green or something. I don't remember. Uh, the blacks are like the softest. And I think these are, or no, it's like black and gold and then red. Um, I don't remember the the order. I have to look at my notes. But yeah, the um, those are really good. Just, you know, just I like the fact that it comes with everything. You don't have to buy it separately. You get the car like, oh, time to tune. You got to go back to a website and pay another $10 to ship uh something you know ten dollars to ship something that small not cool um really solid build really durable absolutely nothing is broken needed to be replaced kind of already mentioned that um oh some other things about my setup so carbon this is the one that comes with the kit carbon rear plate i did add these um rear pod weights i forget the total weight i think it's like 1.5 grams each or 1.5 grams total, something like that. Um, that really 
it wasn't like a huge difference, but it's like it, it calms the it calmed the car down. That's like the best way I describe it. So it calmed the rear end down, especially um, when the grip started coming up. It was just it was just kind of what I needed. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my review of the MWX R1. Overall, really awesome build. Um, highly highly recommend this, especially if you're looking for like your first like um, getting into the lipo pan chassis, and you know you want like a higher performance um, setup. It's high performance, but it's not complicated. That's that's kind of like the beauty of it. It's There's simplicity, but it just works. So let me go ahead and stop talking, and let's go ahead and bring this over to the track, and you can kind of see what this thing is capable of. Come on. Seven nines, baby. Seven nines, and I'm out. So I should for seven nines and we out of here. There it is. Eight flat. 